asking Ken. I'm just checking if you can hear me. Yeah, Deborah, hi. Uh, I can hear you. We've got a little bit of a technical problem, but I think we can manage. All right. We're familiar with that in the television business, trust me. Um, if, if we could just... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding. Um, just starting off with, with your name and title. Brigadier General Carsten Jakobsen, German Army. I am the ISAF spokesman. Um, starting off, uh, how would you describe the security situation in Afghanistan right now? Well, we are looking back at 2011 in the moment, and we are uh, having a look at what we have learned from the year 2011 in hindsight. What we have seen is a year in which a number of considerable changes have happened. We have seen the security situation stabilizing, in particular in the areas where main offensives have taken place, that is the south and the southwest. We have seen the number of casualties dropping, although we had a higher number of troops in theater than ever before. We have seen Afghan national security forces and the Afghan government beginning to take over security and general responsibility in parts of the country in the process of transition. And we have seen the beginning of the drawdown of international forces. So looking at, back at it, 2011 can be described a year where the situation has changed and moves in a new direction, which is a process that we want to continue throughout 2012. There have been quite a few reports on uh, efforts, uh, especially in terms of the United States uh, trying to work with the Taliban on some, some kind of peace initiative. What impact do, does, do those negotiations or even the prospect of those negotiations have on, on the military campaign? Well, ISAF uh, is aware of the fact that victory over the insurgency will not be won on the battlefield alone. At the end of the day, we do need reconciliation. At the end, we need a political outcome uh, to end the insurgency. So ISAF will support anything that uh, has to be done to come to a political conclusion as well as continuing the military campaign. Of course, we will continue operations and we will shift operations to the areas where the insurgency is still strongest. This is our job, this is our role and our part in reconciliation is to persuade the insurgency by continuous strong operations all over the theater that the only way to end this is basically to stop fighting, to not be killed or captured anymore but to join the reintegration process. This is the military part of it. And apart from that, we are obviously aware of the political process that is going on. I would just imagine that would be, it would be very difficult to be, you know, in, in a military leadership position where you're having to make decisions about uh, where to deploy forces when, when you're fighting with the same people you're try trying to talk to. Uh, how do you work with that balance? The military has got a very clear task, and the military uh, task is counterinsurgency. So for us, nothing much has changed. We start the year 2012 in a counterinsurgency operation, and we will continue to pursue the insurgents wherever this has to be done and wherever we have to fight in operations. We are offering the options of reintegration and we are offering the option to stabilize the situation across the board. We have made great achievements in 2011, in particular in the South and in the Southwest. We are still involved in considerable fighting in the East. So whilst political negotiation have started and are obviously uh, taking a grip, the military campaign will continue. This has been like this as long as military conflict goes. Um, I also am, am just curious about the role of the Taliban in Afghanistan right now. Is that the primary insurgent force in Afghanistan? Is the Taliban the type of organization or group where if the leadership is, is deciding one thing, people will, will follow the leadership? Or is it, is it more splintered than that? 
In a counterinsurgency, it is always very difficult uh, to identify a clear enemy, a clear portion of the enemy. If it would be that easy, the military solution would be easy and that enemy could be defeated on the battlefield. The Taliban are the roof of a number of organizations, a number of groups that join the militants for different purposes. There is hardcore Islamists, there is old groups that go back to the days of the Mujahideen. There are those out in parts of the country that are just unhappy with governance, unhappy with progress, that want to have different, different regulations for their part of the country. Uh, in which they are living. There is also organized criminality. There are people who are profiting from the insurgency. So there is a wide area that all together contribute to violence in the country and to instability. The biggest and most important, obviously, is the organized, uh, the organized insurgency, is the Taliban leadership, is the leadership that is sitting with its leading heads outside of Afghanistan, mainly in Pakistan, and they will be the ones who have to call the halt to the shots. If that happens, there will still be violence and parts, but it will become very easily controllable. So therefore, we are at a corner where political negotiations, where actions on the side of the Taliban might lead to an end of the overall violence. But this is a process. This is a process that we have to go through. The role that ISAF has to play in this is a very clear military campaign, continuous against the insurgency, relentless in the pursuit of the insurgents, and very clearly targeted on bringing security and stability to more and more regions of Afghanistan. Okay, and just, just as a final question, uh, what's going on in terms of Pakistan with the supply routes into Afghanistan now? Well, the supply routes through Pakistan are still closed. We still see no logistical transport uh, reaching Afghanistan that is, uh, that is uh, ours, that is logistical transport that goes to NATO uh, and to the U.S. forces. We've also seen hindrance on some of the logistical transport that goes to uh, Afghan firms and the Afghans, and this is a matter of concern, as it is of e ecologic uh, concern for the Pakistani, for Pakistani firms as well as for Afghan firms. The closure of the logistic routes is is a concern in the relations between Afghanistan, Pakistan and the international uh, community. It is not a logistical challenge for us, but it is a political challenge and normalization really depends on this ending as soon as possible. On the military side, we have seen over the last days that we have started moving the first goods back from the control points, the border control points, where they have been stored over many days now, back down to the ports. So we have to watch the situation carefully. It is in the interest of ISAF that the supply routes open again. Logistics, logistically, it's not necessary. We can get our supplies in other ways. But in the interest of stabilization of the political situation, of the overall situation between Pakistan, Afghanistan, and the international community, there is an interest that they reopen. All right. Uh, once again, uh, thank you so much. I uh, very much appreciate you taking uh, the time to talk to us and hope to speak to you again next week. Thank you, Deborah. I hope so, too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.